Hello everyone, we are one of the teams representing the car for the 2016 uh, Shell Eco Marathon made by the FAU, FAU team. Uh, we represent the team working on the chassis, wheels, and brakes for the car. Uh, I'm Rick Vega, I'm joined here by Jordi Guillo and Andres Casillo, and our uh, faculty advisor is Dr. Andres Remate. And our project description is uh, we were to design and uh, manufacture a safe and efficient chassis for the 2016 Shell Eco Marathon built by the students here at FIU. Uh, it is a battery electric vehicle, and we are also to determine the best option for the wheels and the brakes for the vehicle, and to work in tandem with our sister team in the completion of the car. A problem statement. Highly efficient vehicles are growing in popularity, and innovation is on the rise for these vehicles. Uh, motor efficiency and uh, aerodynamics are very important and often seen as um, the most important parts of a vehicle. However, the effectiveness of the brakes and the wheels are never to be overlooked as they are a major portion of the efficiency of the vehicle. Uh, driver safety is also of a paramount concern. We wanted to keep our drivers safe and everyone nearby working on the vehicle safe. So every measure was taken in order to keep the vehicle safe in operation and also in the event of an accident. Our motivation was to represent FIU in the 2016 Shell Eco Marathon with a very electric vehicle of our own design and fabrication. Also to gain experience and learn skills, um, designing and manufacturing the vehicle components and also not to only create a lightweight and efficient vehicle, but also to keep the design safe for our drivers. Our objective was to design, construct, and model the chassis, including the structural frame, rolling cage of the Shelby Comerton vehicle, to research and develop the best option for the wheels and braking system, For the wheel selection, we went with a third wheel design, which means two wheels in the front, one on the rear. Um, this allows us to have a slimmer body, which gives us less weight, better aerodynamics, and also a feasibility of a half-mounted motor. With the collaboration of our partner team, we choose a 26 inches half motor that was selected and placed on the rear of the vehicle. And as you guys can see on the picture, the wheel came with a bundle they came bundled with the motor. Our initial choices for the front wheel was a three quarters inches board, um, since it matched our purchase spindles. We had trouble with this uh, board, since it was very uncommon on this type of vehicle, so we went and modified it to 5 16 inches, which is more common on bicycle, on bicycle tires, and it's also easier to work with. We selected uh, 20 inches for the front wheels, and we pre-machined the mounts for bicycle tires, as you guys can see over here. Um, our brake selection, the Shell Eco Marathon Handbook highly recommends us to use hydraulic brakes, since it is more effective than bicycle style braking systems. And for our first set of brakes, we used last year uh, braking system. But since they provide faulty and difficulty to adapt them, we had to change them. This is our initial hydraulic brake system. We live from an old um, Chevy Comaraton vehicle. It was a Shimano hydraulic brake. These brakes with a rotary motor of 160 millimeters. As I mentioned before, since it provided us failure on the testing, we went and bought the same brand, Shimano hydraulic braking system. However, we increase the rotor diameter to 180 millimeters. This brake allow us to pass the 20 inches, uh, the 20 degrees incline testing. As you guys can see, this was the 20 degrees incline testing that we had to perform before the competition. Hi guys, my name is Andres Caicedo. I'm here to talk about the, uh, the simulation of the chassis. Um, these are where our initial designs for our chassis, as you can see on the far left, they were initially kind of boxy and squarey. That's because the idea came from that go-kart. But then we integrated more of a dragster design, like an NHRA dragster. It's a lot longer, slimmer, and can fit in more aerodynamic body. Here on the body, at the bottom was our final iteration for what we thought was going to be a project. But during the winter break, we had uh, more funding and more time, so we were able to come up with a better design. Uh, some very notable differences right away is uh, around the uh, roll bar. Uh, this was great because we were able to cut a lot of weight from the chassis and also we could fit a more aerodynamic body with the square bar. We had to 
play around with it. We also made a more, a, a more of a surface area for a driver to sit on for more support. And we made the back of the vehicle a little longer, a little wider to be able to fit more, more components and the tire. Once we had our final design, we went ahead and tested out three different materials. We tested 4340 steel, 1015 steel, and uh, 6061 aluminum. These were some <coughs> from Professor Zicaretti down at the manufacturing lab. The reason we chose these three was its uh, quick availability here in Miami. Uh, there were other materials that we wanted to use, but unfortunately we would have to wait around two weeks for the shipping to get here. Now, because of the competition and because of our school project, that was time that we could not afford. So we went ahead and did the three simulations. They are 700 in testing, which is about 150 pounds. We did all the testing on the bar, since that is the most critical part that's going to be tested at competition. On the far left, we can see the 4340 steel in the center of the tent. 15 steel and on the far right, the aluminum 6061. The factor of safety for the 4340 was almost 13. For the 1015, it was almost 6. And for the aluminum, it was 1. These are the results for our simulations conducted. Um, this is where we went ahead and sat down and said, okay, what material do we want to use? Uh, yeah, the 4340 had a higher factor of safety, but the chassis, the same chassis, would weigh about 166 pounds. This being uh, in a uh, an energy efficient competition, wherever we could cut weight would be greatly appreciated. So we went ahead and chose the 6061 steel because the chassis weighs just under 29 pounds. This was great, so that's why we went with the other one. After that, after we had a material, we went ahead and did the uh, actual simulations of the chassis, which is required by competition. The testings are all done on the roll bar, and the first test we're going to try to push it over sideways, the next we're going to try to fold it back, and then we try to crush it. Again, we're going to use the same 700 units, which is required by competition. Here we are. The, the test we're trying to, to roll it over is 109. We're trying to push it sideways. The factor of safety is 1.3. And trying to crush the roll bar is 6.3. Uh, the next simulation is, was not required by competition, but we went ahead and did it to show that our chassis was, in fact, safe for our driver. And the simulation came out to be 109. These are all three simulations simultaneously, the side, the front, and the crush. Again, uh, not required by competition, but to further prove that it, it was in fact safe, we did a collision analysis. Because of the way that the driver's position, he's in a, a bit of a reclined state, his torso was very open to about um, the height of a, of a regular vehicle. So we went ahead and did some collision analysis on these side members to make sure that in the event of a lateral collision, the driver would in fact be safe. Uh, apart from a lateral collision, we also did a frontal collision in the case of a worst case scenario to prove that we would be able to keep our driver safe. And here they are. For the side, uh, for the side collision, our factor of safety was 1.48. And for a frontal collision, we had a factor of safety of 1.3. I'm going to speak about our design experience for this project. Uh, some of the standards we used for this project that we kept in mind throughout the course of the fabricating the body. Um, we took the ISO standard for battery electric vehicles, which describes the um, uh, battery safety in the event of an accident and also the different uh, things that uh, battery electric vehicles need to keep in mind in terms of safety and construction. Uh, we also took the American side uh, testing and materials. Uh, their standards for aluminum 6061-T6, which we use for the manufacture of the body. All the bodies made of the same aluminum. Uh, we also kept in mind the Shell Eco Marathon's uh, handbook, which provided us with a list of rules and regulations to keep in mind when designing the vehicle in order to have it uh, valid for competition. This includes uh, general vehicle specifications, um, uh, size speci uh, specifications, and also uh, chassis solidity. Uh, some of the environmental issues that we kept in mind throughout the course of the project. Electric vehicles are incredibly um, environmentally friendly to operate overall compared to an uh, internal combustion vehicle. The Eco Engineering Club was actually founded during the course of this project with the express purpose of working on eco-friendly projects such as these that would uh, help uh, future generations to have more eco uh, ecologically friendly vehicles and also engineering uh, projects. Uh, the prototype vehicle shown uh, is zero, uh, that we show here is zero emissions. Uh, there's no emissions in the operation. However, there is uh, some waste to be considered uh, from the grid supplied energy that is supplied to the car, as well as the constituent parts that were made, including the, uh, um, the lithium ion battery. <coughs> some of the economical aspects that were considered uh, in a, uh, the construction of this vehicle. Battery electric vehicles are gaining an ever-growing media presence, as well as uh, commercial uh, viability. Companies such as Tesla, General Motors, and Nissan are making very economically, uh, very economically friendly uh, battery electric vehicles, such as the new Tesla Model 3, 
which is uh, coming in at a value of less than $35,000. Uh, electric vehicles have very low operating costs compared to uh, uh, equivalent internal combustion vehicles. You, uh, you can see in 2015 it was about $50 a month to run an electric vehicle on an average commute compared to $150 for an internal combustion vehicle. Uh, some of the global awareness and perspectives that we uh, discovered while working on this project. The efficiency of the brakes and the wheels are incredibly important to any vehicle. Um, many people consider the efficiency of the motor as well as the aerodynamics the most important parts of it. However, uh, the wheels and brakes uh, greatly affect the overall efficiency of the vehicle and uh, are not to be overlooked. Uh, as popularity of uh, efficient vehicles such as these arises, uh, these sort of fields need to be kept in mind and constantly innovated to keep efficiency on the rise as well. Uh, electric vehicles enjoy a relatively uh, high level of awareness in the public overall. I'm sure many of you have heard, have heard of the new Tesla vehicles, the Tesla Model S, as well as the Nissan Leaf and the like. Uh, vehicle safety and stability is also a paramount concern to uh, everyone involved in the industry. Many people consider the crash safety standards when purchasing a vehicle, so these things are very important when designing a vehicle. Uh, however, neither field is considered fully developed or perfected, and all the time companies are willing to in innovate and improve in these fields in order to get uh, an edge up. Lifelong learning. So uh, these design projects such as these which uh, allow students to get hands-on experience with uh, a real engineering project uh, unique such as these, uh, you don't really gain that sort of experience in a classroom or in a lecture. So this sort of uh, thing is invaluable for all students who participate. Everyone who uh, was involved in the project learned a lot, myself included. I learned so much about these sort of vehicles, as well as the manufacturing process and the automotive industry, which not only includes the material selection and uh, analysis of the body, but also cost analysis and also uh, distribution of experience among the vehicle. Division of labor, although all of us worked together in every aspect of this project, including with our sister team, we decided at the beginning of the semester to delegate certain tasks to certain people in order to get a more focused um, uh, delegation of uh, items. Andres worked on the simulations and analysis of the body, as you saw earlier. Jordi worked on the analysis of the brakes and the wheels, um, and, also, and I worked on the vehicle fabrication and the finance management of the whole project. However, all of us worked on the report, and as I said before, we all worked with each other on every aspect. This is our project schedule. As you can see, we began in August with our uh, designs and uh, preliminary analyses. Um, we worked all the way now until April. We actually just came back from competition this past Monday. Uh, conclusions and future work. The Shell Eco Marathon offers students a very unique opportunity to build a very efficient vehicle. Um, these highly efficient vehicles are the future of automotive industry, so it was a very unique opportunity to see a glimpse into the future. Having less than two full semesters to work on this vehicle is an extremely daunting task. Uh, we actually gained funding this past January, so this is the result of about three months' work. And it was very grueling, considering some of the vehicles in the competition have been working on their car for years. Um, this experience was invaluable to each team member at, that worked on the vehicle, not only for the senior design, but also for the Eco Engineering Club, which we offer a great thanks. Without them, this vehicle would not have gone this far. The results of the competition. The brakes, uh, chassis, and wheels all worked admirably. There wasn't any major faults except for the rear axle. Actually chewed through the aluminum of the rear body, but we were able to fix it on site. Uh, we passed all ten grueling technical inspections of the vehicle, uh, much to our delight. About a third of the teams got disqualified before they even passed technical inspections due to um, any faults with their vehicle. And the vehicle efficiency we calculated to be 52, kilowatt, uh, uh, 52 miles per kilowatt hour which would have placed us uh, in official standings in 13th place among battery electric prototype vehicles. And here we have a short video describing, uh, showing our vehicle going around the test track, and through the course of this vehicle, we'll be accepting any questions. Thank you very much. Any questions? The rear wheel is actually a hub motor, which means that the, uh, the motor is actually incorporated into the, the tire. Um, these are distributed usually to put into bicycles to tr uh, transfer them into electric vehicles, usually that have a battery mounted on the back and it would propel the bicycle. We figured this would be a good application of the motor for this vehicle as it saves space. Well, was the rear hub maintained by the rules or? It was not. It was not, okay. No. Uh, now, you have to work on the spindles. Yes. Uh, 
before you had three, what was it, three quarters? Three quarter inch board. Three quarters, you went up to five, five, five We went down to five sixteenths. Five sixteenths. That was because we bought the spindle before the tire. Right. And it wouldn't really fit, so we had a yeah, minute down sure. to match it. And did you do analysis of the spindle after you trimmed it? Um, I believe our partner team did the analysis of the spindle. Okay. You'll see it. As far as the body, fiberglass? Body is fiberglass and will be further explained with our system. That's the next thing. Thank you very much.